Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, we're gonna check out yet another automated reef tank tester. This time, the reef bot from Reef Kinetics. Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs and thank you for joining me on another video. Regular viewers will note that not long ago I did a review of the uh, Mastertronic from Focustronic and uh, it received quite a lot of feedback about whether it um, was good value, was it cheap, was it expensive, was it accurate. Quite a few people pointed out that it looked like a slightly more refined version and considerably more expensive version than this reef bot here. And um, I had a couple of people say, would you be interested in testing the reef bot? And I said, yeah, of course, I just can't get my hands on one. And uh, before you know it, a uh, local reefer, Mary and Paul reached out and said, we've got one sitting here, why don't you grab it? Have it for a couple of weeks and do a review on it. So uh, first of all, massive shout out to Mary and Paul. That's um, very, very generous of you. Not only did they provide the uh, reef bot, they also provided the reagents that I'm gonna use for this test. Now. Again, this is another test where it's being provided to me by a customer, no distributor, no manufacturer, so you can, again, trust that this is completely unbiased review. I will tell you what I think about this thing, warts and all, and um, I guess we may as well go into the unboxing. I will point out that this device has been set up before. Mary and Paul have done a great job in making it look like that it's uh, brand new, but this device has been used, but uh, we'll get into the unboxing nonetheless. All right, there's our device. Let's get all this packaging out of the way. All right, this here is the reef bot and uh, it's got this little lift flap, I guess you call it, you lift up here. We can take this cover off and it shows you the inner workings. Now I'm gonna bring the camera in so you can have a close look while we talk through what it is and what it does. All right, now you can see why some people said there was a lot of similarities with the uh, Mastertronic and that's because in short, there is, there's a lot of similarities. We've got the same sort of vials here that we put the reagents in. We've got a um, mixing or rinsing tube here and we have a tube here which has obviously got some sensors in it which is what does the actual uh, test, I guess, and looks for the color change and uh, goes from there. We also have a syringe here with a uh, motorized arm on it and uh, we've got this little track here that'll move that, that syringe across to pull out different reagents. I guess the only real difference is, is that uh, your reagents are lined up here, they're not on a carousel, and therefore you've probably got less reagents. In fact, we've got two, four, six, eight reagents as opposed to 12. Now, I should also point out at this point in time that this is the version one. I believe there is a version two and there's also a uh, pro or a max or a, a, a commercial version which has huge vials or heaps more vials, but uh, I'm gonna base this review on version one. Now, briefly, I think I can tell you that, yeah, the, the syringes, uh, sorry, the vials are bigger, the syringe mode is meant to be a bit quieter, and I think from memory, that's about the only differences. Um, if you are in the market for one of these now, they only sell the version two, it came out as the same price. So, um, I mean, <laughs> the version one's obviously already obsolete, but it's gonna do for the purposes of this test. So um, you can see we've already got some reagents in here. Um, they're already been pre-filled out for me. So we've got API for phosphate. We have API for calcium. We have a red C for uh, alkalinity. We have, I believe this is the same. I believe this is fauna marine for uh, nitrate and nitrite, ABC reagents there. We have this rinse and uh, mix chamber, and then we have the actual sensor chamber. So. I figure I may as well set this device up and get it happening. I do notice we've got an ethernet port on this side. We have a power port. And uh, over here, we should have the same sort of deal. We've got um, tank water at the top, ROD water and wastewater. So I'm gonna go about setting this device up. I'm gonna put it right where the uh, Mastertronic was in my tank. I'm about to head off for the weekend. So hopefully this thing doesn't uh, cause any massive dramas, but uh, I'm gonna get it set up so we can do some tests while I'm away and uh, then I'll review when I get back. So let me get into it. Let's set this bad boy up. Now, as mentioned, the reagent bottles were already pre-filled out for me and I feel like that saved me a ton of time setting this device up. But that being said, wow, it was a breeze to set up. I literally sat it in place, hooked up the three lines being tank water, ROD water and waste, and uh, then downloaded the app and we'll jump into that app now. All right, so I've pre-downloaded, it's called Reef Kinetics in case you were not sure. 
and uh, you're faced with the option of setting up a uh, tank and whatnot. You've got to create an account, so I'm going to quickly set that up now. I won't show you my email or uh, password, obviously, so we'll skip past that section. But uh, it seems to work okay. We get to the point now where I add a tank, so I'm just going to title that the Dream Reef Tank. And uh, then you put in what sort of tank type and some details about it. I must admit, I'm not overly sure what this part is for. Maybe down the track, there will be some sort of automated dosing, but um, I'm not overly sure why uh, reef kinetics need to know the uh, width, height, and depth of my tank and what kind of corals I got in there. But hey, um, good luck to them for collecting the data and hopefully doing something uh, good with it, not evil. So once we've finally got through all that section there, um, once I work out what volume a tank is, I go to create and uh, we should be ready to roll. It says tank added successfully, okay. And uh, now I've got a tank and a device. So I'm gonna add a device, I wanna add a reef bot. It wants to use Bluetooth, totally fine by me. We can then do a search. It's gonna do a search and hopefully find the reef bot. It has, it's found it. Great, click on that. Uh, something went wrong. Alrighty, okay. That's a little bit annoying. Maybe we'll do another search. Nope, something's gone wrong again. Okay, sometimes these things happen with these devices. Let's give the uh, reef bot a reboot and uh, try again. Do a search again, there it is. Hey, now we can add the uh, Wi-Fi to it, put the password in, which I, again, won't show you, <laughs> and then it will connect, hopefully. So uh, it's going to think about this for a second. Let's see how it goes. A little bit of a rocky start there, but um, not too bad, I guess, as long as this uh, Wi-Fi connects. Probably fairly similar to the Alcatronic, uh, sorry, not the Alcatronic, the Mastertronic in that sense, in that a um, little bit of a rocky start there and getting the app connected. Let's see how we go. It's taking quite some time here to connect to the Wi-Fi, which is starting to make me nervous. Hey, it's connected. All right, good stuff. Now, uh, it's asking if I want to change the name of the device. I'm not going to because it's not really my device to change. And now we get into this section where we select what parameters we want to test, what brands of test kit we want to use to test those, and then what number vial each one of those reagents is in. Now, uh, you can see when we scroll through each of the parameters, you've got quite a range of options to pick from in test kits there, which some of those require two reagents, one reagent, three reagents. So uh, pick your options carefully. Thankfully, like I said, mine were all preset for me. So I'm at the stage where I can just schedule a test. So I'm going to start off here with phosphate, not phosphate, as I tried to spell it the first time. So let's go for phosphate. We're going to schedule that to run. And you can see the options down there. Well, you probably couldn't because it was quite quickly, but you can set that to run hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, etc. It makes it super easy to build a schedule, which is a uh, nice little improvement on what I did experience with the Mastertronic. Now, I'm just going to change the time of this test so that it does it right now, and then we'll jump in and check out the machine as it actually does that test. I'll walk you through what it's doing, and then we'll speed the footage up because it does take a little while to do the test. All right, here we go. We're doing our phosphate test. You can see that second chamber on the right there just filling up with RO water, getting ready to rinse the syringe. That is an important component because... Uh, we use the one syringe, so we need to make sure both the inside and the outside of the syringe is clean. So you can see that it uh, draws some RO water up in there, spits it out, cleans the inside and the outside of that syringe. Happy days. Now, we're also pumping a little bit of salt water into the chamber on the right hand end there, the black plastic chamber. That's our salt water. We don't need to do anything with the syringe there. It's just filling up as it's... Uh, as it does, it's waiting. It's got the little spin bar underneath to make sure it's all getting nicely stirred. Then our syringe will move across to the phosphate one reagent. Gives it a little stir, you can see there. Syringe goes down. Wow, it bent a long way on the way down, but came out okay. It's going to put that reagent into that uh, into that location, into the, the chamber, sorry. It's going to stir it and spin it. You can see the wash chamber filling up with RO water again. This syringe is going to go down in there and clean it out in preparation for getting reagent two. Now, like I did mention, this footage has been sped up. A test for version one of this machine does take a good 30, 40, maybe 45 minutes. So I've sped this footage up quite a lot. Once it's sufficiently cleaned that syringe, we're gonna go across, spin reagent two, put the syringe down into it. You can see that syringe is bending drastically on the way down. Not quite aligned there, but um, that's all right. Slowly draws out the number of, uh, the amount of reagent two that we need. 
waits for that volume to go up into the syringe and then it'll go across and it'll put it into the black chamber again. And then of course, it'll spin the solution, wait the amount of time it needs to wait. It'll check the color and then report against that color chart for API phosphate and then report back to me on my phone what the value is. Finally, it'll then clean all the syringe and do all the things, get itself prepared, ready for the next test. And whilst we're showing the front of the device, I should swing around the back and just show you the uh, workings behind the rear panel. You can see this uh, suite of Kamoa dosing pumps here, neatly lined up. And there's one there that looks like a stepper motor pump. You've also got a, uh, looks like a bespoke little uh, driver board there with a, uh, you can see all sorts of uh, stepper motor drivers. There's a DC voltage converter. There's a little uh, memory card there with a uh, network adapter. All seems fairly straightforward. In fact, I quite like the way it's nice and neatly laid out the back here. It looks like if you did need to work on this machine, it'd be quite simple and straightforward to do so. All right, that was surprisingly easy both to set up. Thankfully, all, like I said, the vials were all pre-filled for me and that was the thing that took the most amount of time on the uh, Mastertronic. But with the vials pre-filled, all I had to do was plug in three lines, one for waste, one for RO, and obviously one for tank water. Um, I had to plug in power, download the app, open it up. In fairness, it did take two goes. I did try to connect the first time and it said there was a problem, so I had to restart the device. After that restart, it connected fine. I was able to schedule a test. The result came back exactly matching what I would expect, it being between zero and 0.25 in phosphate. So I'm gonna take that as a win. I'm gonna schedule a bunch more tests in now over the next week or two. I'm gonna let the uh, ReefBot do its job, hopefully with no problems, we'll see how we go. And um, then I'll report back just like I did with the uh, Mastertronic. So um, I'm gonna go schedule some results or some tests and we'll go from there. Three weeks later. All right, so as the title screen shows there, it's been three weeks since I first set up the reef bot and I have just finished packing the device up and getting it ready to give back to its rightful owners. And it's a good little segue to say, just that reminder that this device was provided to me by a customer, not a manufacturer or a distributor, so I could give a completely impartial and honest review. Now, I should preface that by saying that, um, I must admit, going into both the Mastertronic and especially the ReefBot review, I hadn't heard the greatest things. Now, the Mastertronic was new, but there was a lot of skepticism around it. So that's sort of, you know, people just unsure about new technology. But the ReefBot has been about for a little while. And um, I'd had heard a few horror stories of them uh, flooding uh, cabinets. I've even heard of one catching on fire. I've heard of one doing random tests just whenever it felt like it, doing all sorts of strange things. I can say that I experienced none of that. The ReefBot was an absolute dream for me to use. Now, I guess one of the most important things is the accuracy, and I did see a little bit of a um, shift in some accuracy, some things like calcium read about 50 to 60 ppm higher on that than uh, three or four other test kits that I compared it against. Um, some other things like phosphate, it only reads, um, well, for the reagent I used on the API phosphate, it reads zero to 0.25 and then 0.25 to 0.5, 0.5 to 0.75 and so on. That's a huge gap in reef tank, 0, 0.00 all the way to 0 0.25. My results always come up in 0 0.25, which doesn't surprise me because I'm struggling to get any phosphate at all in my system at the moment. So I guess that's not an inaccuracy thing there. It's just a fairly, it's a fairly blunt tool, I guess. But, um, and the calcium and K tested a little bit high. Same with the alkalinity, tested a little bit higher than my other testers. But what I can say was that it was consistent. And when you're talking about automations like this, consistency is the key. Having just another value to compare against some other tests or things that I've done to see whether things are going up or down was absolutely awesome. And being able to schedule tests to happen on their own, whether I'm home or not, schedule them to run in the middle of the night so when I wake up in the morning, I've got a full suite of tests there, or schedule them to run during the day when I'm at work and uh, get little pop-ups on my Apple Watch to tell me what my calcium, phosphate, magnesium, you name it, whatever the test kit I set it up to do was absolutely Absolutely awesome. Now, one other thing I really like about the ReefBot was the range of test kits available to it. Now, sure, I only use the test kits that were provided with me, but when you have a look at their listing, there are so many options out there, and I hear that it is a potential to actually continue to grow. And it makes sense. As long as it's a liquid reagent, the company can verify the test results against some known samples. They can program those values in. You can download that as a firmware, and all of a sudden, your ReefBot's able to do even more parameters, which is really, really cool. And that's probably one advantage the ReefBot has 
has over the Mastertronic is that it has been around a bit longer and they've got more test kits verified. The suite of tests available for the ReefBot was absolutely incredible. All right, so on to the cons because I wanna make sure that I give you a completely fair and open review. Whilst there were lots of things I loved about the ReefBot, there were a couple of things that were a little bit, uh, a little bit rough. And some of that was around the uh, build, I guess, of the unit. Uh, things just like uh, the way the syringe is held into place and the way it moves just wasn't quite as precise as the Mastertronic. And I think that was really highlighted when I, um, when I checked out the footage of uh, doing a test that I sped up about 20 times. And when the uh, syringe came down, you could see the syringe bend I'm assuming that's because it didn't come down perfectly straight, so I put some pressure on it and then the uh, syringe bent to the side. And things like that, it just uh, didn't really impact the test at all, but it was just a little bit sloppy and um, probably some things that you could probably button up a little bit if it was um, your device and it was set in place, you could probably go about tightening up that mechanism, making sure it was perfectly straight. But um, I guess that's just me being picky because realistically it didn't impact the test whatsoever. All right, the next con was, yes, it wasn't perfectly accurate, can I stand here with the hand on my heart and say that that's uh, the reef bot completely? No, I can't because uh, I didn't put the reagents in the vials. I don't know how old the reagents are. I don't know if the reagents been contaminated. All these things. So um, I don't want to say the reef bot's inaccurate because it wasn't. It was very consistent. It was consistently out a bit on a few parameters, but spot on on another few. So um, I guess if it was my device and was here running. I would just know that when it says I've got uh, calcium at 540 ppm, that means I've got calcium at 480 ppm and not to worry too much about it. All right, lastly, it's probably a pro and a con. The ReefBot does have uh, access to the API. Unfortunately, it's not freely available. It's something you have to apply for. I did apply for it, but um, I did that a couple of weeks ago and I haven't heard back yet. I would love to be able to uh, poke and prod it and get uh, some of those values from those test kits out so I could do some cool graphs with them or get it to control some other devices. I'm sure with a bit more time up my sleeve, the uh, Reef Kinetics team would reply and give me access to that API, then I guess the world is my oyster. I could get this device to do almost anything, which would be really, really cool. But uh, for the time I had it, the API was uh, locked down and uh, that meant that I could only handle the uh, app that it came with. And um, I guess that's a good segue onto our next con now. I was fairly judgmental of the Mastertronic app, um, but on the same hand, it is software that can improve. Now, I had heard that the, uh, the ReefBot app was a million times worse. I'm happy to say that I actually found it to be on about the par level with the Mastertronic app. Whilst some things like scheduling tests was considerably easier than the Mastertronic, in fact, you could schedule a test to run every hour, every day, every week, every month, whatever you wanted it to do, you could set that schedule up once and it would just be there forever. I did find some of the buttons in the app to be a little uh, non-intuitive. I quite often found if I wanted to change the time of a test, or if I wanted to see what the latest result was or whatever it may be through the app, I had to click a lot more buttons than I really should. I really should just be able to click through a couple of things and get to it where I found myself going around in circles a little bit now. I guess that's one of those things you would get used to, but uh, in the three weeks that I played with it, I didn't get used to it and I found myself going around in circles with the app. So that's another reason for me that I would love to be get hold of that um, API so I could just pull those figures out and do whatever I wanted with them in my own app. All right, I think that's probably everything. I will finish up the review by saying that um, this last month and month or two, I guess, where I've had both the Mastertronic and ReefBot has completely opened my eyes to automated reef testers. I honestly thought we were nowhere near getting them to a stage where they were viable for home use. That has completely changed. I'm honestly at the point now where I don't know if I should buy a ReefBot, a Mastertronic, or if I should wait for the GHL iron probe and test that as well. I'm fairly sure I'm not gonna look at an Apex Trident. That just doesn't float my boat very much, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's down to the other three or potentially any the other runners in the uh, market if something new is coming out. At this stage, the ReefBot and uh, Mastertronic are kind of neck and neck for me. I know one's considerably dearer, but there is an Australian distributor for one and the other I'd have to import from overseas. That's possibly gonna sway me. Um, the GHL Iron Probe though, that's gonna be possibly a game changer. So I'm contemplating now that that is finally making its way into the market, just waiting until that comes out, hopefully getting my hands on one to do a review and then having had hands-on experience with all three, I'll be comfortable in making a decision as which way to go from there. But um, 
as things stand right now, if a uh, Reef Bot or a Mastertronic was to land on my lap, I would not be complaining at all. I love both of those machines. And if you're in the market for one, I honestly think you couldn't go wrong with one or the other. It really comes down to what comes, uh, what's more important to you and uh, what's available to you. I guess where in the world you are, what comes up secondhand, what fits your budget, whatever it may be, I think you would be happy with either one. All right, guys, I will wrap this video up there. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all regarding the ReefBot, be sure to pop in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do give the thumbs up. And last but not least, if you are yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. Just click that button down in the corner. It takes two seconds of your time, costs no money at all. I'll finish up with a giant thank you to Mary and Paul for loaning me their ReefBot for this three, four weeks. It's gone a long, long way to getting this review done. So um, thank you guys. I really appreciate the support. Other than that, guys, till next time, Stay safe, keep roofing.